Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. What I wanted to take a look at today was how we could use the profile template in uh, Revit so that we could make our life a little bit easier down the line when we're doing some detailing. So we're going to take a look at uh, a fascia profile that is going to consist of the finish fascia board as well as the rough fascia and then we can use that in tandem with some roof framing uh, down the line. So I'm going to open up a template here. So I'm going to click on new and oh, not new, not new project. Sorry. So new. I'm going to wait for the flyout. Choose family, and then I'm going to find profile RFT. And when that opens up, we get uh, essentially our two origin planes for this. So what I need to do first is set up uh, a framework so that we can create some types in just a second here. So if I click on reference plane, I'm going to choose the pick lines option and I'm going to put in uh, 1.5 inches and then just come over here to the left and click click on that. Um, now I'm going to make that a half an inch and do one more of those. Now we'll put in our horizontals here. So I'm going to put in another one, five and a half inches and then we'll do it one at seven and a half. Okay, so now more or less I have my uh, framework set up. So what I want to do is put some dimensions in here first. So I'm going to put the dimensions in pretty quick. Okay, and just get those thickness dimensions in there as well. So there. All right. So the first one here, this is going to be our uh, finish fascia thickness. Click OK. And then the second one, this is going to be our rough fascia. This. And notice how I'm just leaving these as type parameters because I want them to be able to change globally after the fact because um, I'll want to make one that's got uh, a couple different sizes here. So now that uh, get those ones done, we'll go to our rough fascia depth and make our finish fascia depth as well. So notice what I'm doing here is because I know that these are dimensional. Um, when I select the dimension, I go up to label and add a parameter. And so when I say add parameter, it's automatically going to give me the option of whether it's type or instance, because it might vary. Um, but the, the discipline is going to remain common and the type of parameter is going to automatically be a length. And then we can group this where we want, but I want it to appear under dimensions, so I'm just going to leave it where it is uh, for the time being. And then now that we have the uh, the dimension set up, we can go in and create our profile. Uh, we could have created the profile for this, but all right. So I'm just drawing in that profile. So it's one closed profile. Now that it's drawn in, we need to align lock all the line work to our framework. And this way, we can drive the geometry with the parameters. So you'll notice that I'm selecting the reference first and then the line that I want to lock. So now that I've got those all uh, locked up, or I think I do, maybe I can check it with my uh, reveal constraints. And there should be uh, uh, one of these lines, basically one of these burgundy lines over top of all my reference planes. So you see that looks good. Now I can go up to the family types button here and to create the first one, we'll say new type, and this one's going to be called uh, finish one by eight with rough two by six. And then we'll create another one, we'll call this finish one by six with rough two by four. Okay, so now that I have this other type created, I need to modify the dimensions for that. So this one's going to become a uh, five, and this one's going to become a three. We'll say apply, and we should see the framework shift and the line work shift with it. So now that we have that done, we'll come up here, and we'll save this to the desktop as built up 
fascia. All right, so now that that's created, we'll say load in a project. We'll come back over here to this house we got going where we're working on the roof. And let's zero in on the roof here and go to our fascia tools. So I'm going to the architecture tab, the build panel, and clicking on roof tools, go to fascia. There's already one in here, fortunately, so when I click on edit type, I can go to duplicate and call this built up fascia in this project. Now I'm going to choose my profile and look for the built up fascia ones that I have here. So I've got that one by eight. I'll go to material and we'll just choose softwood lumber for the time being. We'll pretend that this has got no paint on it and it's just construction phase. So let's click on the edge of our roof and we see that that finished board is going to the inside. So let's just zoom back out and find our direction toggles and it flips it around. So now uh, I just hit escape a couple times to get out of the tool. I select that first board that I have and you can see that my ribbon expands to give me um, a couple options here. So I'm just going to hit add remove segments and then click on the next adjacent face. Rotate around. Now I'm just clicking on all these edges. And now I've got finished fascia. So you can see that when I select that, that's all one element. Okay, now if I go to uh, a section that I have set up that cuts through that fascia, you can see where it sits right now relative to the roof. So if I want to drop that or push that out or bring that in, I can select the fascia and say, okay, vertical profile offset. Let's drop that minus 0.875. Oh, nope. Minus 0.875 inches. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. And then you can move it out or in using this with negative or positive as well. And uh, if we wanted to, we can adjust where this roof sits using that same sort of functionality. You can see that there's a level offset here. So uh, anytime you're trying to change roof heights or whatever, sometimes just the level offset is all you need. Uh, so we can take this roof too and we can change this to something else if we need to, something that's a little thinner. And then we can put some rafter framing um, right inside of that. So you can see now we just got kind of a, a cladding situation. So now if I go to uh, the extensions, uh, I'll be able to put in some rafters for this roof here. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll do that in the next segment. We'll take a look at some of the extension tools. And uh, if you have any questions for this one here, just put them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. I know.